the thing that attracted me when I knew that these objects were available was the fact that these were the perfection when it came to long distance engines um, uh, to, to flight. And mm -hmm. so when these are in the air, they can be in the air for incredibly long amounts of time refueling in the air. And they were part of an obsessive compulsive nature, which is to, for, for, uh, for the country to, 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 to find itself surveilling um, and for security. It, and in the most basic sense, surveillance comes before bombing. Oh yeah, these are the you know, so these are the kinds of planes that, that that understand what's happening in order to create targets or to understand where targets are not. Oh yeah, these objects are the pre and preemptive. I think there yeah. is a certain sort of feeling that you know these were the additional sort of materials which led to a certain stasis within the world. That the fact that we could actually still have a standoff was because we could actually assess access information from both sides mm -hmm. of, um, of what was then, I guess, the Iron Curtain. But I think they're, they're far more contemporary in that respect by being the dead object that we see in front of us, right. the benign object which is lying in front of us. Because in a way, I was very interested in whether or not these objects would offer a spectacle simply because of what the life that they'd led. Um, but there, there's a certain amount of truth in these objects which kind of denies the possibility of spectacle. With flying, I was always very much um, somebody who hates it, but I but I could tolerate it when I was on an airplane. Right. And uh, but it took me enough to get me onto an airplane. But I always loved the idea of the society flying over a over a mountain in, I guess, somewhere like Waziristan or something. That these places are unpopulated, completely right. unpopulated. But your population is flying thirty five thousand feet above. Yeah, there are three hundred or four hundred people just having a roast chicken dinner. Roast chicken dinner, watching, I don't know, Shrek. <laughs> exactly. And, and so there is this incredible sort of relationship that we're having to the world somehow. It's, we're, we're sort of negating the natural nature of the world. Yeah. And, and so um, I'm very much interested in the reasons why we have that sort of detachment and the apparatus that we design and we build. Um, this goes as far as mobile phones, I guess, and jet engines, all the sort of dominant objects we have in society pushing right. us or, or coercing us into, into lively into, into a life that uh, which we um, which we find maybe alienating anyway, right. and and I and I don't criticise that alienation. I encourage it to some degree. Right. I, I, I want to to see if you can sort of push that sort of alienation a little bit further to 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 make it more absurd. And I think maybe the introduction of the materials that I've put in the uh, antidepressants into the actual jet engines themselves is a kind of a a kind of a leap into the absurdity of the engine itself, but also wanting to to build a bridge between the sort of the linkage of the psyche. Um, that sort of created these objects and the psyche that use it perhaps or the right. psyche that have to in tolerate these. The transformations I think are numerous here. You know? I mean, so coming to these engines as works of sculpture, obviously, mm -hmm. not, I mean, this is an art museum, not a museum of science and industry. Yeah. So there's already a kind of tension in putting these kinds of cultural artifacts here rather than at, again, a sort of science or military museum or something yeah. like that. So there is, a, uh, there is a, a sort of dislocation in their context. There is a sort of notion that they are artifacts um, of a certain time, of a certain moment in time, um, built of you know, kind of creative intelligence and kind of significant resources in the same way that paintings or sculptures or other kinds of works of art from the same moment in time, the 20th century, are here, sort of co-extant with this object. So there are a number of these kind of dislocations that begin to make um, us understand these as works of sculpture. The transformation here, um, unlike other works, earlier works, where the transformation began as an external, the alteration here is completely internal to the operation, and that's where you get to this level of the pharmaceutical. The, the powders which are inserted into the engines themselves is uh, Effexor, Cytolopram, and Manitol, which are three um, um, antidepressants, as we, we call them in, our, in the UK. Um, and they come from a prescription of someone who's, uh, who's part of my family, and, and it's the, the resultant sort of prescription. And for me, there's, there's a, a maintenance that I wanted to apply to these objects, but I wanted it to be a sort of a metaphorical maintenance. There is a kind of um, corollary that's being proposed, for me at least, between um, the anxiety that these engines introduce, whether again it's the most basic kind of fear of flying or whether it is the uh, kind of more existential anxiety of global security, yeah. um, and the kind of psychic alleviation or the sort of this, the sort of psychic trauma that accompanies those notions again fear of flying or global security and then the alleviation of that. I think that Manitol and Cytolopram and Effexor are apparatuses as much as apparatuses just as these engines are and I think that 
basically they're, they're, they're providing the same amount of security and, and basically separation from, from, senses, uh, from, from our own sense of, of, of nature and reality right. that we have. And I think it underscores that there, for me also, there's a kind of multi-tiered approach to looking at these objects. There's the incredible formal complexity and kind of ugly beauty of yeah. them, the way the kind of core of, of these images is laid bare and you can see um, I mean, one you, as an artist, you couldn't design this if you tried. I mean, just it's something to work with from from a different point. There is a kind of terror, um, whether they're you know the terror of what they're used to do, what they might be used to do, the terror of, that they've fallen from the sky, that they implicate wreck, um, that they're actually not where they should be, and yeah. they're not behaving as they should be. There is a kind of uncanny terror um, to their placement in that sense. And so, if, I think if finally the kind of the, the implication of, of, of chemicals, pharmaceuticals, psychopharmacology um, embedded inside the machine, you know, finally underscore um, all three of those responses, you know, yeah. and the kind of validity of all three of those responses. My relationship to them is, I guess, the words complicated and depressing come to mind. And so I'm very interested in that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I seem to have a relationship with objects which tend to be either sort of monolithic or, or try to look between the monoliths somehow. I'm looking for the, 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 the strange kind of idiosyncratic sort of natures between two rather large pieces. And so the dust piece I would call a large piece or a crystal sort of crystallization like seizure perhaps would be uh, another monolithic piece. But I also have these kind of this fallout, this kind of strange kind of um, dialogue which I have between the pieces. Um, which tends to be more about my own sense of reality or my own sense of relationship to work. And so this is now another symptom which I'm going to have to work out through a group of another, another group of objects. And so I'm quite excited and quite interested about what those objects are going to be. You know, it's an incredibly civilized city, Chicago. And so I wanted to see this piece within that kind of context, I think. And I think uh, seeing them now, it, it makes a lot of sense. And so when they were craned up, because we had to crane them over the architecture of the building themselves, um, they were floating for a while. I'm not religious, but it was kind of an interesting moment. And so it was kind of nice to see. They, they seemed to have this uh, rather sort of interesting glow about them as they were floating around the, the Chicago skyline.